when you got to the house at about uh, 2.30 or 3, I believe you said. Is that about right? Not correct. Uh, did you meet with uh, Lieutenant Brad Sibley? That was the first officer I encountered, yes. And what, if anything, did he relate to you at that time? I asked him what, what had happened, and he responded to me that she would have been deceased. Do you remember your first response? Shock, stunned. I didn't really have much to say at that point. Did you ask Brad Sibley at that point if she had been murdered? Well, yes, that was the first thing that came to my mind. Why would that be the first thing? That because he had told me that it was not natural. Would you have asked something like, has she fallen? Or did she hit her head? Did she fall down the stairs in the house? You just thought it had to be assumed murdered? Why not? More importantly, why? I have no further questions. Hey, yes, Judge. <clears throat> Mr. Atherton, you received a phone call from the police saying your wife's curse is in the house. Were you concerned? Yes, I was. And in addition, when you arrived at that house, uh, you had attempted to previously call your wife on the phone. Yes, I did. And you received no answer. That's correct. And then you also attempted to call her on the cell phone. That is correct. And then when you arrived at that house, describe the scene for the ladies and gentlemen in the jury. I come down First Street, and when I get to the stop sign at college, I see police cars sitting in the street, and I see yellow tape wrapped completely around my house. Do you see detectives canvassing the neighborhood? Yes, I do. At that point, when you find out that your wife is deceased by unnatural causes, do you think it's logical that you thought that she was murdered? Absolutely. No further questions, Judge. Are you correct? Are we cross -fed? No further questions. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. We step